All right, in the final stages of getting this generator ready to hook up to my house, the last step is to float the neutral wire. Now I've tested my house and it is bonded. The neutral and ground are bonded, so we don't want a second bond. So if you're not familiar with this, talk to your electrician about it. It's not a complicated subject, but um, something you should pay attention to if you're not sure. Okay, so we're gonna get this cap off. I'm, and I'm not just gonna take the wire off. I'm actually gonna put a switch in line. That way I can have a switch for the house. And if I ever want to use the generator like for on the job site or to run power tools, I can just flip the button and switch it back to regular generator mode where it's bonded. So this is switch. The switch that I'm going to use is this one right here. This is a 120 volt switch. Okay. I'll put the link in the description below, but make sure you get a 120 volt switch, not a 12 volt switch. There it is right there. Something that's rated for, this is 30 amps, 125 volts. Uh, this is gonna be a lot better. It's actually has two connections here, so you could put two wires through here. I'm just gonna be putting one. Okay, and on this generator, these are seven millimeters. Should come off pretty easy. All right, and in this case, this is very straightforward. The neutral here, there's a hot wire, there's a hot wire there. This is the neutral wire. It's bonded um, to the frame here. And this is the ground wire, this green one, of course. So we're gonna take this one off right here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is take it off right there as well, and then go ahead and bring this to the outside. I'll have to drill a couple holes in my plate there. And then I wanna mount the switch right here. All right, so we'll take this one off right here. We'll get that neutral out of the way. We'll go ahead and put the ground wire back on. Okay, so the neutral's out of the way. Ground wires back onto the frame now. Okay, and in this side, this is an eight millimeter. Let's make sure we're on reverse. Okay, so this one yellow wire, I'm going to put back on there. And here's our wire. Let's go check the gauge on it here. Okay, now I just cut this in half. This measures at a 12 gauge, the one that came off the generator, that's 10 gauge. Okay, I got the wires made, 10 gauge, crimped, and hot sh heat shrinked. Now, as far as mounting this goes, I've got a couple just uh, bolts with some lock nuts on there. Probably have to use some washers. But basically, this is what the original one looks like. It's got these little indentations here in the ends. And I just went ahead and drilled one on each corner, one there and one there, out that side. Now, I'll take this, put it on like that. There's my hole, and now I'll drill the back side, okay? And this is not anywhere close to my screws. It's not anywhere close to my wires. So this is gonna be a safe place and a safe way to mount it. I will seal it with silicone. Okay, now we'll just drill it back the other way. Okay, and that's what that looks like. Now these little holders, I'm flipping it over like that. I'm putting that part down just because my wire is not very thick. Okay, came out pretty good. The strain relief feels really good. Let's get it back together. Okay, we got our leads connected here. We got our multimeter here. And we're just going to flip the switch to make sure it has continuity. Perfect. Okay, got some wire loom on it. Got to, I just put my, instead of drilling holes, I just bent, bent a couple of these open. I mean, why not? Just use what's there. And we'll get this bolted onto the generator head here, and then we'll get the switch mounted right there. So I got my one wire tied in underneath this part right here where the other wire was. Comes up, of course, goes through my switch, comes back around and goes to the, and the ground wire is still underneath the common wire there. All right. Okay, and it looks a little hokey, but you know, looks like the eyes got opened up there <laughs> and uh, the cables come up here. I just need to put a little silicone in here and a little silicone in here just to seal those off. And um, this is probably, didn't need to do this, but I uh, just went ahead and wrapped it in quarter inch wire loom and wrapped it up in electrical tape uh, just because that's kind of how I roll. Um, some self-tapping screws. I was going to put bolts and nuts through, but I didn't realize this is a solid box right here. 
And so I thought this was open on the back side. It's not. It's a solid box all the way around. So these are just self-tapping screws I put through here. Work perfect. So I just labeled once. I, maybe you guys have better ideas of how I could have labeled this, but that's the house side. And so that's, you know, I just labeled it up here, H and H, and H equals house, neutral floated. And over here is JS for, uh, JS for job site, you know, neutral bonded. So if you go back to use it as a regular standalone generator, um, to run tools or whatever, um, not connected to the house. You want that neutral bonded, so flip it over that way. Okay, if you got other ideas of how I could have labeled that better, let me know. Okay, and if you found some value in this video, give it a like. It helps the channel out a lot. And if you haven't noticed already, I've got a bunch of champion generator videos on, you know, about uh, brackets, hoisting brackets, how I made those. Those are real simple. Um, this wheel for this heavier generator, this is 200 something pounds. So this just allows me to roll it around wherever. And uh, there's a video on that. One of them's on how to repair these, get these dual fuel generators working again if they're not running, if you can't get them started. Um, like, especially if they're running propane and not gas. There's a few simple things that if you just understand that, once you watch my video, these will all make sense to you and you'll be able to fix these easy problems that can arise from these. And one of the funnest videos I did was generator output. I actually bought a little oscilloscope and we can actually see the sine waveform and what the different waveforms look like with these different generators. I actually tested three champion generators that I own. And so that's a lot of fun. So check those videos out. All right. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.